Coach Chippo Yeti and Thompson. Chatai Manompa, Aukli Makosh Hachi Al Panchali. Satik Chiami, Oti Tokolkat, Atlanta, Oklahoma, Belinka, Alashwa. Atako, Oklahoma, Chata, Okla, Historic Preservation Department, Noshkoboko, Sia. Himak Nitak, Chata, Ima, Limpa, Hachiman, Olachi. Hello? All right. Himanasi, Noholo, Ima, Nompa, Nompa, Chosho, Olachi. Hello, everyone. I greet you in the beautiful Choctaw language. My name is Ian Thompson. I serve as the director of the Choctaw Nation Historic Preservation Department. I live with my wife, Amy, near Durant, Oklahoma. Today, I'm going to talk to you guys about Choctaw traditional foods. You know, food's something that's really important for every group of people. We all like to eat, and you can tell by looking at the Choctaw people here behind the tables that we definitely like to eat. Who here's seen the movie Ice Age? Well, for those of you who haven't, the movie Ice Age is about a type of animals that used to live here on this continent back about 12,000 years ago. These animals were huge. They're a lot bigger than any that are alive today. Things like the mastodon, things like a bison that was much bigger than today's, things like um, armadillos that stood this tall, rats that stood about this tall. These types of animals used to live here. If you go over to the Natural History Museum today, you can see their skeletons. Well, some of the Choctaw stories that talk about our early history describe living with these animals things that were unlike anything alive today. They were giant. Archaeology, the science of studying past people through the things they left in the ground, has confirmed these Choctaw oral stories. It shows us the Choctaw people did indeed live with these giant animals 10,000 and more years ago. In addition, archaeology has showed us the Choctaw people not only lived with these animals, we used to hunt and eat them. At this time, we didn't even have the gun. We didn't have the bow and arrow. All we had were spears and a type of throwing spear known as the addle addle. This one right here, as a matter of fact. Can you imagine going up against a 13 foot tall elephant armed with only this? But that's what our ancestors used to do. They were brave and they were excellent hunters. So they'd use these to bring down animals and they ate them. The Choctaw diet back at that early day was made up of meat and also out of native plant foods that we gathered. Some of the plants that we ate were things like tanishi. In English, that's called goosefoot. Or poke. In Choctaw, that's called kosheba. Or stinging nettles. In Choctaw, that's called hashtaposa. You know, these are really nutritious wild plants that are there for the taking. They just go out there and get them. Through time, the Choctaw diet evolved to meet the changing needs of the people and also the changing climate. As time went by, Choctaw communities became more sedentary. Instead of traveling around a lot, we stayed in villages. A different food source was needed, so Choctaw people started to eat mussels. You know, some of you guys have probably had mussels. They're a really important part of French and Cajun cuisine. Well, Choctaws were eating mussels thousands of years ago. You know, we ate so much of them that created these giant middens out of mussels. You can still go see the mussel shells left as food refuse by our ancestors thousands of years ago in the southeast. As time went by, the diet continued to change. About 2,000 years ago, Choctaw people started to interact with the native plants in such a way that we changed them. We changed their nature. We domesticated them. At that point, Choctaw people began to plant gardens, things like tanishi, um, lamb's quarter, knotweed, marsh elder, all these native plants. There was a major revolution in Choctaw food that happened about 1,000 years ago. And this is described in Choctaw oral story in the following way. There was once a boy, and he was orphaned. He was out in his yard playing, and a crow flying from the southwest came over his yard, and it dropped the single grain of a seed at his feet. Well, this boy picked up the seed, and he planted it in a small earth mound that he made, and he tended it. He kept it watered, and over time, the seed grew into a plant. People came by and made fun of him for spending all this time working on the small plant, helping it to survive, but he didn't pay them any attention. He just kept weeding it and watering it, making sure that it had what it needed to survive. Eventually, this plant grew tall, as tall as a man, and it grew ears on it that produced more seeds. These ears were the ears of corn, and people realized that this plant that this boy had been tending was something very special. It could provide a lot of food for the Choctaw people. And so the the village that he was a part of took those ears of corn and they preserved them and they used those as seed for the next year. And the next year they had a big corn crop. Today, if you eat Choctaw traditional food, 
the main ingredient is corn. So if you go to the cafeteria today and have some of the Choctaw foods on the menu, chances are that they'll have corn as a major ingredient. Through time, the Choctaw diet continued to evolve and adapt. About 100 years after we got corn, Choctaw people received beans from the tribes living in Mexico. So we started to grow beans. About 100 years after that, we also received pumpkins from Mexico. And we realized that these three different plants could be grown together to support each other in what's called the three sisters. The corn plant grows up tall. The bean plant uses the height of the corn to wrap around so that it can grow up and reach the sunlight. The squash plant has broad leaves and it covers the ground. If you plant those at the base of the corn and the bean plant, those leaves shade the ground and keep weeds from coming up and choking out the corn and the beans. So the three different plants work together in the garden. If you eat these three plants together, it's more nutritious than any one by itself. The corn, the beans, and the squash together complete, create a complete protein that's very healthy. So that's the basis of the Choctaw diet. When Europeans came into Choctaw country, they were starving, so Choctaw people provided them with food. That's the reason that the French and the Spanish were able to gain a foothold in the southeast is because the Choctaws and the other tribes helped feed them. The Europeans brought new foods with them, things like garlic, things like leeks, things like the domesticated pig, the domesticated chicken. The Europeans also brought people from Africa with them, and they brought additional things like okra and certain types of gourds. Choctaw people were great farmers, and we adapted to all these new plants. We started growing these plants from Europe and from Africa and exporting them back to the Europeans. Choctaws also grew food for the other tribes around us and traded that. So we were the, the top agriculturalists in the southeast. Today, if you go into Choctaw country, some of the foods that we eat are ancient. If, you know, my wife and I, the last meal we had before we left our house was Tanishi, that wild plant I was telling you about. That's something Choctaw people have been eating for 12,000 years or more. If you come to our house in the next month or two, you're likely to eat it with us. But other Choctaw foods have the, the newer ingredients in them. Today, the Choctaw national dish is tanchi labona. It's a kind of hominy mixed with hog meat. So it has the ancient, it has the corn that we received from the crow flying from Mexico, but it also has the hog meat from the hogs that we received from the Spanish. Um, another Choctaw national dish is banaha bread. These are corn dumplings that go really well with the beans, again, to complete the protein, the three sisters. Um, today, we have fairs like the Choctaw Labor Day Festival. Food's a big, important part of that. So if you're in Oklahoma around Labor Day, I, I invite you to come by to our festival and try out some of our foods. If you're not able to do that, I invite you to come to the cafeteria and try some of the Choctaw-inspired foods that are being offered there. Thank you very much.